Do short games suck? Is it a ripoff to buy a brand new game on Saturday and have already completed that game the very same day? Games like Resident Evil Remake and Rise Son of Rome for example can be done in about 6 hours. That's not even speed running, that's just how long the adventure lasts roughly. Also, we should look at the financial cost of things. Should you even be expected to pay full price for these short experiences or should the price be lower? And most importantly, many things are subjective and does how satisfied the player is at the end of the day play a part in all this? Well, let's look at everything and have some fun together. Before we proceed, in case you were new here, I upload weekly videos on this channel, sometimes two if you're lucky, so be sure to subscribe if you like old fashioned gamers who put games first and social politics last. Games are about escapism, not activism. So first up, let's look at Resident Evil 3 Remake. Cutting edge graphics with the RE engine, launched in 2020. Launched 2020 to pretty good reception. Critics were pleased and normal fellow gamers were mostly happy, but the fact that this version of Resident Evil 3 was missing features and entire areas compared to the original PlayStation 1 version, contributing to the single player campaign being just about 6 hours with a full price tag attached by memory, but let's just say it was full price just for the point of this conversation I would like to have, was this short game a ripoff? Is asking full price on an experience that can be completed the very same day it was bought acceptable? While game lengths vary greatly between titles and some even reaching the 100 plus hour mark, the standard expectation of game lengths for video games is about the 20 hour mark. It's safe to assume that you will get at least that much out of your full price purchases in general. We also don't pay extra for the game length. I'm obsessed with Dragon Quest 6 on PC right now, right? And I'm about 80 plus hours in. I did not pay extra for that. It's just understood that good RPGs can last a long time. In that same time, I could have beaten Resident Evil 3 Remake 13 times. Now, short games do have some benefits to them. Like a good movie, every moment can be perfected and ensure a thrilling ride from start to finish. It's over just as you want more, but also before it had a chance to get tiring. It also offers players satisfaction that, hey, I completed that game, even though I'm rather time poor or am a parent. Some short games live friend free in our minds as well, like Rise, Son of Rome or Limbo for many years to come. It's also better for indie developers who are not rich but trying to break into the industry. Short games also avoid something that many gamers hate and that is filler content. Segments of gameplay that last way longer than they should, resulting in some games that should have been a 20 hour experience into an unwanted 40 hour journey. I think a divide here is more evident when we look at short AAA experiences. Games that launch with 3 to 4 different versions of the same game, but sold in parts to get more money instead of, you know, having a complete game in the first place. I also believe money and value come into play here. Games are expensive. A brand new game here in Australia, if PC or Sony, is about $100. Nintendo Switch games have sold for only 70. Thank you, Nintendo, very much. Even your $10 increase for Zelda Tears of the Kingdom had your game still cheaper than everyone else by $20. But let's stay focused. If I paid $100 for a AAA game on Saturday, and also on Saturday I already beat that game, I would feel nothing but disappointment. Even if the experience was thrilling and memorable, I'm at $100 and already done with the game. It didn't even last me the entire weekend, just a day. Now what if that game had cost $40 instead? I would certainly feel more appreciated. $60 cheaper than others plus an amazing experience? That's a fair trade to many. I might even recommend this game to some of my friends with the warning that it's short, but that explains the much cheaper price point as well. So I don't think the question here is, can short games be fun? Of course they can. They can be a thrilling and memorable experience. Now, I think I can predict some people commenting saying things like, how can I expect a AAA budget game to sell for cheap? 
just because it's short. Look at Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. Regardless of how you feel about the actual gameplay, the visuals are breathtaking to say the least. This obviously costs an arm and a leg and maybe some butt cheek just to make. On Steam in Australia, I can see the full price of this game for $70, which is not terrible. It's not as cheap as it should be, but at least it didn't kill itself and be dead on arrival by slapping a $100 sticker and sinking immediately. You often hear the argument made that games cost so much to make these days, and if anything, publishers should be charging us more. I won't get into it into this video as I have done so already in the past and maybe I'll dedicate another video on it in the future but for now let's just say I actually don't have any sympathy for publishers making greedy choices and putting the responsibility of gamers to support their product. Before a game is worked on any kind of game they know what type of games tend to sell and what sort of numbers they can hope to achieve. The more money they put into the game the more sales they need to crack a profit. So if you know for a fact shorter games don't tend to normally sell as much as longer games, that should have been part of the equation. Maybe focus more on polish, getting rid of bugs, and having a more memorable experience with actual fun gameplay. You don't need state-of-the-art graphics for that. Now, this is all general and not specifically aimed at Hellblade 2. This is also the problem we face with long games where the publisher blows a hundred plus million dollars and now they need a hundred and fifty dollars in sales just to stop the game being a financial flop. I think short games should aim lower and the price point should reflect that. Smaller experiences with smaller budgets make sense. This means you need smaller sales to be a success. Also, a pro tip is players who feel respected will throw money at you. The first chance they get release your short game and have a nice cheap entry point. Players around the world will give your game a chance and be pleasantly surprised. The moment you release an expansion, DLC and a numbered sequel, you're going to be rolling in the money. This is all so much more efficient than trying to get people to buy your short game at the same price of full length games. So I think short games absolutely should stick around. Great entry point for smaller teams, bringing unique experiences and even testing grounds for AAA developers, so long as the price reflects how much time you're putting in the game. Now, you may be that rare exception where you are happy to spend the full price for a short game if the experience is memorable, but know that you are not the norm. That is not a personal shot at you, but you need to keep the larger picture in mind. Games are a business and publishers should not be giving talented developers a disadvantage before the game even comes out by setting them up wrong. If it's not priced well, if the length is short, all of these things are going to go against the developers and sometimes these publishers expect something that is unreasonable. Aim for lower, be successful and stop being greedy. So to summarize, yeah, short games, I think they rock. I think they definitely have a place in the industry. And I think for people who don't have that much time or frankly just don't like playing the same game for too long, I think the option should be there. Do I think that because the cost of development with games have gone up that we should be expected to pay more in general? No, I will fight that tooth and now that is absolutely unacceptable. The gaming industry is more profitable than ever. The only developers who are flunking right now are those that actively ignore their fan base to spend too much money to begin with and so in return expect too much back. If publishers spend a hundred million dollars on a game, that's because they expect to make a hundred plus million profit. Maybe they should have spent 50 million, maybe they should have spent 40 million, not have cutting edge graphics but have a smooth launched experience with fun gameplay. They will get the money, it's their greedy choice to spend that extra money and not the responsibility of gamers to have to back up every single game even though arguably the quality of games these days is going down. Bring on those shorter games, bring on those longer games, but have the appropriate matching point. Yours is a long game, full many hours, get a lot of enjoyment out of it, yeah cool, have your full length game, whatever. But if I can sit down and beat your game in one sitting, you are not getting $100 from me, you are not getting $100 from a lot of people. And frankly, give yourself a chance, give yourself a chance. Short experience, small amount of money, more people will give you a shot, more people will become fans and more people will support the future DLCs or anything else you do. 
get the fans. Trust me, look at Nintendo. If you look after people, they will shower you with money. Try to be a bit greedy and charge more than you should and it will backfire. That being said, God bless you all. Take care and uh, I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe, to support the channel and uh, love you all. Okay, bye-bye.